Afternoon, VC, Aris here. Uh, Southampton have won a game of football. <laughs> Red Army! <laughs> you know it. <laughs> My days. How can this day get any better? How can it get it? <sighs> What's this? Hang on. Scarlett Johansson has just texted me and invited me out for a night out at Nando's. And she's got vouchers for a free starter. Oh my god. Sorry, Scarlett. Busy tonight doing the Rob Walker 2023 vinyl tag. Ciao for now. <laughs> Treat and mean. Keep and keen. She'll be back. Um, it's the Rob Walker 2023 vinyl tag. Um, I'm doing this without, I'm, I'm using the records as a prompt because uh, so I'm hoping I remember all these. Best release in 2022. I haven't got any uh, current release. Well, I have actually, but that comes later. But I've gone for this actually because it's never been released. It's the Daft Punk Homework Remixes. Um, so it's DJs remixing tracks from Daft Punk's Homework. Only three tracks. So, well, there's about 11 tracks, but they keep repeating them. But I really only bought this for uh, the Around the World Masters at Work mix of uh, the Mellow mix. Um, and it's a great pressing, by the way. Fantastic. If you want to buy, if you want to buy the 12 inches with the remixes on. Daft Punk have gone berserk. You're paying 40, 50 quid. But it's also got the, uh, the uh, Slam mix of Burning and the Ian Pooley cut-up mix of Burning, which is fantastic. And uh, this is one of the best pressings I've heard. It's, it's only about 20 quid, this. And uh, yeah, it's a great, great stuff. And, and some of the other stuff's decent as well. But um, yeah, fantastic stuff. Next up, last band group you saw live. I saw Johnny Marr on a, doing a warm-up gig at the fire station in Bournemouth. I think it was around March. Um, only about it's a student union, so it only took about four hundred people. Bit of a bit of a dead crowd, but um, I think we were just after another COVID wave. I got a feeling. So Johnny Marr was the last doing a sort of a solo show. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. So I've chosen this, "The Queen Is Dead" by the Smiths. It's a twelve-inch single that came out after they'd split up. Um, it's quite interesting because it's got on the B side. It's got on the A side. It's got the song "Queen Is Dead." On the B side, it's got the three instrumentals the Smiths did. Obviously, Johnny Marr wrote. Um, that came out on Smith's B-sides, or yeah, all on B-sides. So you've got Oscillate Wildly, which I absolutely love. Um, Money Changes Everything, which Brian Ferry then used for one of his singles, um, The Right, I think it's called The Right Stuff. He literally lifted the tune and just sang over it. It's a decent track, actually. And uh, The Dre's Train, which was around the Queen is Dead era, actually. And uh, that's, that's probably the weakest of them. But yeah, I love Oscillate Wildly, and I, I know I really like... Um, Money changes everything as well. And so did Brian Ferry. Because if you listen to Brian Ferry's The Right Stuff, I think it's called, then you can tell he, I think Johnny Marr um, gave him permission to sing over it or was back in on that. So, uh, yeah, so it's this, The Queen Is Dead 12 inch single, um, The Smiths, um, with all the instrumentals. The only way you can get the, the three Smiths instrumentals on one bit of vinyl. Um, beautiful. Their first album was the best. This was easy for me. De La Soul, um, Three Feet Arm Rising, bought this on, uh, I think it was my 18th birthday, it came out and I bought it. One bit of vinyl, it goes on for about 65 minutes, so you've really got to crank it, it's way too much. Because a, a, a vinyl record can only handle about 20 minutes of information before things start, on each side, before things start going south quite rapidly. And uh, the good news is, this is being reissued on a double, because even if you want to buy the reissue on a double, you're paying mental sums. But I think it's coming out for about 28 quid on a double. Get your orders in now. One of the most amazing albums ever. Is it better than Paul's Boutique by the Beasties? Don't know. They came out within about a month of each other. But yeah, this is the copy that I uh, I swiped when I worked at HMV. Um, don't tell them. Um, triple triple threat. You got it on all formats. I would have had loads on this, but I threw my tape collection away like many people 10 years ago. About 600 cassettes. And I was doing a quick Discogs, and I'm not joking when I say that cassette collection, if I sold it one at a time now, would be worth about 20,000 quid. It's seriously... A lot of the hip hop and the punk I had in that. I had a load of SST, Discord. Oh my God. But we go with this. The Smiths again. Um, Strange Rose, here we come. And then I've got, I've got the uh, cassette, which is how I bought it first. I bought the cassette. I think I bought this the day of the Great Storm in Britain, 1987, when Michael Fish announced, don't worry, a lady has told me there's going to be a storm. And she's talking bollocks. And then, of course, Britain was subjected to the worst storm it's ever been <laughs> it's ever had which i think was september 87 but i bought i think i bought this on that day and uh, i've got the cd version as well but uh, not my favorite smith album by any chance a lot of the mystery had gone by this stage but i'd say about four or five amazing tracks so uh, yeah not bad not bad um starts and ends with the same the same layer. i've got i've got a bit of um 
I've got a bit of beef with Rob Walker here because I remember he did a competition of this about when I first joined the VC, and then I think he scrapped the Rob Walker. If you do comment, can you tell me did you ever run that competition? Letter starts and ends album titles. I've gone for the amazing Say Chic by Chic. Everything on air is friggin' amazing. I remember everyone in the UK who loves music, I reckon, I was thinking about this, has got a top of the pops moment. For a lot of people a little bit older than me, it will be when uh, David Bowie put his arm around Mick Ronson's shoulder when he did Starman, and that was seen as quite scandalous. And so many punk rockers in England, punk bands, always talk about that moment as, as they fell in love. Some people might have Morrissey when he ripped his shirt off during William, it was really nothing, and, and it said, marry me. I remember that was a big, quite a big moment for me. A lot of people will have when Stone Roses and Happy Mondays appeared on the same show. A lot of people might be where Blur and Oasis chart battle. For me, it was when uh, Sheik did My Forbidden Lover, um, which actually isn't on here. And they looked amazing. The blokes were in Gucci shoots. The, the women were in like these purple dresses. It just looked like nothing I'd ever seen in 1979 as a young man. When everyone, all my mates were into like ACDC and Motorhead. And uh, I just thought that was, I just thought it was amazing. They, wear, they looked so schmick as my gran used to say. <laughs> and uh, it's an incredible album, this. Sheet Sheer, La Freak, Savile Fair, beautiful instrumental. At Last Time Free, covered by Ro Robert Wyatt, actually, at Last Time Free. Robert Wyatt, who was in Soft Machine, and he does a fantastic version of that. Um, just one of my favourite albums. I've got another version of this, which might have my Forbidden Lover on, but yeah, Say Chic by Chic, just, just wonderful. Um, born the same year as you. Missy, get your freak on. I love Missy, beautiful. Aussie artist, um, I, I want to show something, because I don't have that many, so this is maybe a little bit more unusual. Um, these are Mortal Souls, Roland S. Howard, um, incredible 12 inch, beautiful. Found this in, in uh, Oxfam this year, for only, I think about six quid. Um, fantastic, sort of experimental, good avant pop from the These Are Mortal Souls, and a Roland S. Howard, and epic soundtracks as well. Um, most re listened to record this year. I've really got back into this. Destroy Rock and Roll by Milo. This is one that clogs up charity shops. You can get it for 49 pence. It's kind of halfway between the band Air and somewhere between almost Portis Head and maybe the lighter moments of Darth Punk. This is a marvellous album. It's, like, it's very um, lounge core dance. In England, you might know it for um, the song Destroy Rock and Roll, where it has a, an American sort of preacher from the 80s, a sample where he's slagging off bands and it's got that bit where it goes, um, I, I, it's just brilliant. He, he goes on about David Bowie and missing persons, Duran Duran, missing persons, Duran Duran. And I've, I've, I've fallen in love with this record. Again, great for driving to. Fantastic, fantastic record this. Um, really approachable and I think it's just a great record. Milo, Destroy Rock and Roll, came out in 2005. It was pretty big in the UK, hence why it's probably filling up charity shops everywhere but it's a brilliant record this great for the car surprise of the year yeah because of uh, miss earth david last freeman and alan static traveler they both talked about good stuff holds the planets and i've realized that these sort of things are so cheap in charity shops and uh yeah great fantastic sounding and i love it i love it fantastic and i've started dipping more into charity um classical stuff because it's so cheap and it always sounds great because it, most of it's never been played um, a band you have the whole catalogue of, um, yeah, Who's Could Do. You're going to have to trust me. I'm not going to dig out on my Who's Could Do records. So I bought out the very first Who's Could Do record, which was uh, Land Speed record, the live record. I don't recommend this. It's 19 tracks, 30 minutes, mental. Um, on Alternative Tentacles, this one, with the lyric sheet. Also, the last one I bought, which was Who's Could Do's live album, The Living End, um, which is really good, actually. I really got into this. I started playing it more. It's on, on red vinyl as well, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, this was their last ever release. Bit of a sad story to relate. I, I was a Hooska do nut by about 85, 86. And they opened an office in London, SST Records. And this, I've often said, is, is often I'll say this is my favourite of a record, Land Speed. Um, sorry, New Day Rising. Um, and it's the, um, it's the um, UK pressing when SST moves. If you've got the UK address. These UK Who's Could Do records, there's only a couple that came out on UK pressings because the, the office soon disappeared, sound incredible. I came back last year after a heavy night out. The record was leaning against one of my speaker stands. I knocked over the speaker stand. The record went underneath. The spike on the bottom of the speaker stand then, tragically, went through the record. <laughs> These are bloody hard to... F not only does it sound amazing, not only is it an incredible record, it's really hard to find the UK pressings. 
and this one's knackered, and it was heartbreak. I almost shed a tear. I almost shed a tear. But Saints won a game, so let's move on. Come on, you Saints. Um, the best run of three albums. I, this didn't take. This was easy for me actually. But old surfers. Um, so you've got Rembrandt Pussy Horse, the American pressing. Rembrandt Pussy Horse, the UK pressing or the European pressing. Then they came with the absolute bomb, the nut job album of all time, Locust Abortion Technician. How do you describe Locust? It's just marvellous. I think John Bitbot Boom's a bit of a fan of this, or a bit of a fan of the Buttles. And then they came with the uh, Hairway to Stephen. The incredible. Starts off with their uh, demolition of um, Black Sabbath's uh, Sweet Leaf, which they call Sweat Loaf. And uh, actually, uh, the other album there demolishes the Guess Who's American Woman. They really do know how to do a cover version. They absolutely rip it to shreds. But, yeah, that's my best three album run. Um, 80 soundtrack. Yeah, this was pretty easy as well. Ennio Morricone, who I'm a huge fan of, Once Upon a Time in America. When it comes to his sort of symphonic string soundtrack, this is this is just the most wonderful album. And it almost brings you to a time to the verge of tears and a great film as well. But the soundtrack is just absolutely absolutely wonderful soundtrack i recommend anyone to get this soundtrack it's, it's i think in terms of his strings and symphony and you know i love anyone in the uk probably knows the mondo morricone cds where it's his sort of 60s quirky pop which he was fantastic at but yeah once upon a time in america ennio morricone sadly died this year last year can't remember but yeah fantastic stuff disappointing release of the year yeah sorry it's got to be swifty midnight's my, uh, if you, mine's on a sort of, yeah, it, it, swift on autopilot, didn't go for it, personally. The, the, odd, the odd moment of magic, but, uh, yeah, sorry, Taylor. It's not, it's not you, it's me, but it's, it's not happening for me, this one, I'm afraid. Um, we lost them this, last year, oh, Ronnie, Ronnie Spector. This is the beautiful, uh, um, sing their greatest hits, but it's the first album in completion. What, what an influence they were on mid-80s British indie guitar pop, like, um, the Jesus and Mary Chain Psycho Candy with that uh, so many tracks would start with that boom 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 tsh, boom 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 tsh. but so many of the English jangle bands were, were, were obsessed by Ronnie Spector they always wanted to sound a bit like Phil Spector meets the Velvet Underground um, so you've got bands like the Shop Assistants the Darling Buds the Primitives that where they were colliding noise with sort of sweet melody and yeah Ronnie Spector this is fantastic my favourite I don't know anyone else's but probably Walking in the Rain it's just marvellous, and what a, I mean, what an absolute, what, what a hottie Ronnie Spector was, but yeah, incredible stuff, love this, I'll take this to the grave, this, this record. Um, Non-vinyl release, yeah, my Vice City CD soundtrack, all the, uh, all the radio stations on, uh, on CD, so you get to hear all, all the radio stations, um, Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, um, originally, look, this was in Game Shop for £49. I got this from Oxfam. I didn't pay £49, believe me. But this goes for an absolute arm and a leg. I just, again, I struck lucky. I struck lucky. But, you know, Lee, Lee Trevino used to say about golf, you know, the more you play, the luckier you get. And it's the same with record collecting. If you just keep hitting charity shops, the, the more decent stuff you'll find. But, uh, yeah, I, I was really chuffed to get this. And another great one for the car. Absolutely brilliant. Um, Grail. I found so many. Gra I reckon I could do a top 10 Grails this year. And also, I just showed uh, Gang of Fours Entertainment possibly signed, but this is the grail for me. And this will mean, this will lean a lot to people in the UK. So I can think of a few people who watch my channel. Probably Wob Walker, exactly. This will mean a hell of a lot to. A guy called Gerald, the Voodoo Way 12 inch, the, the record that changed a lot of people's lives. It certainly changed my musical life. It came out in 88. It's part acid house, part almost tribal, part techno. A guy, Voodoo Ray, was. this is the 12-inch single, so hard to find. If you want to get a mint copy of this, you're probably paying 70, 80. I didn't pay quite that, but I paid about 35, 40 for this. The cover's a bit beat up. The vinyl's beautiful. As soon as I heard this, it was my, my journey into house music, techno music, dance music began. <coughs> a lot of my mates, you know, we were Smiths fans. This was incredible. It still sounds incredible. He took on the Americans at their own game. People like Tyree, people like Marshall Jefferson. It still sounds incredible. It's still the greatest house record of all time, in my opinion. That you can still drop it in a club now and it goes berserk. He's from Manchester. Interestingly, it's got um, <clears throat> a sample that says Rudu Ray. But that was, um, um, as in Dudley Moore and um, Roger 
um, who was it? There was Dudley Moore and um, Moore and oh, I've forgotten the guy's name, but it was him saying um, Voodoo Rage, but he couldn't get it in his sampler, so he it turned into Voodoo Rage because he could only sample three seconds. But yeah, so thrilled to get this, and it sounds incredible. Um, incredible stuff. Um, space on the cover. I've gone for I think. Um, this was quite an obvious one, Magic Fly Space, a great early 80s sort of electronic dance classic. Um, Stevie's Vinyl, Stevie's Vinyl Cupboard, I think showed the seven inch single of this today. But yeah, brilliant, really cheap this, and sort of an electro-y, techno-y, but early 80s sort of balearic classic this, fantastic stuff. Um, record from 1973, this is quite interesting. Um, and this is a little bit of a money-making scheme, if anyone wants it. Dionne Warwick's Just Being Myself, it was her 1973 album, <coughs> came out in 73, Holland Dozier Holland did all the songwriting, so you're thinking Dionne Warwick, Holland Dozier Holland, the greatest songwriters of all time, I won't be dissuaded, this is going to be amazing, it kind of wasn't, but it's pretty decent, it's probably a 7 or 8 out of 10 album, I think John the Sixth Pianist has got this, but what happened, This I bought this copy for about 50 pence, because I was a soul fan, I noticed it started going berserk on Discogs. Now it's sort of 60, 70 pound. You used to be able to find this everywhere. I mean, I bought this in the, in the milk crate outside the shop, probably for, I think for about 50 pence back in 91. What happened is Jay Diller, the sadly died hip hop producer, sampled a few seconds of You're Gonna Miss Me for his Donuts album. And because of that, this record started going berserk. But you can still find it. I mean, I bought, I found a copy recently. This is the, I want to tell because this is the, UK copy, this is the US copy, and my US copy, my UK copy was a bit pops and pops and clicks. So this copy I bought for a pound, I think, was a, a little bit better. Um, you can see it was in the, uh, I think this one was in the cutout bins, because it's got the cut, always a sign, a record that didn't sell. Again, I bought this for a pound. So this still slips through charity shops all the time, just because it looks awful. But this is like a 60, 70 pound record. Game out and It's a decent record. There's eight tracks on it. Five or six of them are, are fantastic tracks, sort of just pop soul really and uh, if you see this pick it up are you going to have a great record if you want to flog it you're going to get 60 70 quid on it because of because of jay diller sampling 12 seconds of it if jay diller hadn't sampled 12 seconds of it it would still be a two pound record but uh yeah so uh yeah just being myself dion warwick came out in 73 decent record i still play it all the time but uh yeah so that's my vinyl tag rob thanks for doing it um stay safe everyone I hope everyone has a good day and uh yeah take care